Healthcare spending keeps rising, accounting for an ever increasing percentage of U.S. GDP. So we thought we'd take a look at the companies and the trends influencing the medical field. And joining us now from Baltimore is the author of The Future of Medicine Mega Trends in Healthcare. This is Dr. Stephen Schimpf coming to us live from Baltimore. Dr. Schimpf, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Lisa. Well, let's get right to some of the, the biggest issues, perhaps the top three you see happening in medicine right now, issues that, that a number of um, our population is suffering from. Well, I think that one of the biggest things that's going to happen, but there's a whole series of trends, like I like to call them mega trends, but one is we're going to have, we have now, we're going to have more and more chronic illnesses. By chronic illness, I mean things like diabetes with complications, heart failure, cancer, uh, arthritis, uh, um, autoimmune diseases like celiac disease. These are all going up in numbers, and there's two reasons. First one is that we're getting older. I look at myself. I know I'm getting older. Uh, but, you know, old parts wear out. So we're going to see more and more chronic illnesses as the population increasingly gets older. But the second thing is uh, we as a country have a lot of adverse behaviors. We don't eat a nutritious diet. Uh, we eat too much of it. We are kind of sedentary. We've got a lot of stress, and 20% of us still smoke. And that combination, again, leads to chronic illnesses, the same type I just mentioned. Let's and particularly concerning is in, in younger people. We're seeing it now even in adolescents. You know, Dr. So it's, it's a real change. I want to focus, though, on, on this aging population, this sort of a double-edged sword. You know, it's great sure. to be able to prolong your life, but at the same time, there are a number of issues specific to an aging population. And I know one of them is reduced memory capacity. I mean, I know this just from a personal perspective, not just my memory, but, you know, as my parents have grown older, I've realized that a number of, of the elderly are often have memory issues and are often diagnosed with the dementia. What, what specifically can be done for that? Well, you know, you've really hit on to one of the most important chronic illnesses, and that's dementia in general, Alzheimer's. But long before we want to talk about true dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, we, many of us start to lose our memory. My wife tells me I've been losing my memory for 45 years or so. I'll never bring home the quart of milk she asked for. But uh, there are some interesting studies out just recently that uh, omega-3s, those good things that we know we're supposed to eat in salmon and herring and, and mackerel, uh, they can be found. <laughs> the fish get it from algae. And what's been found is a way to, to extract the, uh, the omega-3s from the algae put into capsule or liquid forms, and, uh, and this is called DHA, and it's, it's put into baby formulas, for example, to help babies grow a strong brain. But the exciting thing just recently, within the last month, a study came out, good double-blind, randomized controlled study, that showed that people who took this algae-produced uh, omega-3 versus those who did not, had, uh, had better memory uh, retention. And in terms of so a company... Is, is, is it a... I, I was going to ask, in terms of a company that's actually capitalizing on this or is actually um, using the, this technology. The name, the, the name of the company is Martech uh, for marine technology, but Martech. Okay, and let, let's move on to another one. You talked about uh, also sticking with this aging theme, macular degeneration. A lot of people losing their eyesight. I mean, certainly, you know, as right. I'm getting older, I'm having issues with my own. Well, let's hope it's not macular degeneration, but macular degeneration is when the central focus of your eye starts to go, and that's the part we read with, we drive with. We still have the peripheral vision, but it's the central part that goes, and the most common cause of blindness in the United States, I think it's like 1.7 million people have macular degeneration. In any event, it's, in the past, there was nothing to do for it. Uh, my dad had it. In, in, in many ways, I will tell you that it ultimately killed him because he, he just couldn't do the things he wanted to do. In any event, there is now a, 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 a new drug, actually two of them, called monoclonal antibodies that uh, can be injected into the eye. That's sort of an interesting thought for all of this, but, you know, if you're uh, losing your sight, you'll, you'll tolerate it. And apparently it's not a, a, a tough procedure. I have not seen it done, but I'm, I'm told it's not very difficult. Um, and it gets to the compound called vascular endothelial growth factor, or VGF, uh, and it blocks its action. And as a result, um, it stops the progression, I'm saying everybody, but in many, Dr. many people, Schiff, most people. 
I apologize. Yeah. We're, we're going to have to leave it there. We got to go into our break right now. But thank you for joining us, Dr. Schimpf, with the latest yeah. on the mega trends in the medical industry. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We are back now again with Dr. Stephen Schimpf. He's the author of The Future of Medicine, Megatrends in Healthcare. And uh, Dr. Schimpf, we had to end there um, to go into break, but I did want to continue right. on with our discussion. We were just about to get to sort of a company that actually is involved in macular degeneration and in the care for that. And I guess, you know, in prior years, there was really no particular treatment. No, there was no treatment. Now there is. It's this monoclonal antibody that, that, uh, that blocks the action of this compound that we produce, those who have macular degeneration produce in, in excess, and, and, and it really works. So there are two of them, and the one that's been approved by the FDA is called Lucentis. It's made by Genentech, and um, it's expensive. It's like $2,000 an injection. You need it every four to six weeks. So it's like $50,000 a year. Well, it turns out Genentech makes another drug, which is very, very similar, a uh, monoclonal antibody, which is used for colon cancer, called Avastin. And you've heard about it recently that it's just been withdrawn by the FDA for, for breast cancer. But uh, they're very, very similar compounds, and ophthalmologists have found that uh, the one called Avastin works, seems to work just as well. There's a study going on which will be published or finished sometime this spring. So until then, it's off-label. Uh, but it's used, and it's like $75 uh, uh, an injection. So it's uh, an interesting, uh, uh, I don't know about dilemma, but it's an interesting contrast between two drugs from the same company, one approved just for the eye, very expensive, one approved for, co for colon cancer, but it can be used for the eye and much less expensive. Okay, let's move on to um, heart issues. Again, this is all part of an aging population. Well, uh, of course, there's a, heart failure is becoming all too common. It's almost an epidemic. Uh, one thing that's uh, relatively new that, uh, uh, that, that's kind of exciting, I think, is that some people develop what's called aortic stenosis. The aortic valve comes out the top of the heart, so when the heart beats, uh, after it beats, the valve closes so the blood can't run backwards. And sometimes in older people, this will start to get uh, calcified and hardened, we call that stenotic. And when that happens, the heart has to beat harder and harder and harder to get the blood out. Once that occurs, and once people start to have symptoms, their lifespan's about five years. So you can replace the heart with open surgery, I'm sorry, not the heart, replace the valve with open surgery, but about 30% of people that need the surgery can't have the surgery. They've got other problems, maybe chronic lung disease or some, some other reason why they can't tolerate the open surgery. Now what's exciting is, and it's kind of almost blows your mind, is that they've developed a, 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 a valve made out of some uh, a prosthetic pig material around a steel base. They put it on a catheter. They insert it into the, to the big artery in the, in the groin, run it up through the aorta to the aortic okay. valve, and literally insert it in place through a catheter. So there's no open surgery. All right, Dr. Schimpf, we're going to have to leave it there. I do know, however, that Edwards Bioscience is one company that has these aortic valve developments. Right. Thank you for joining us today. That was Dr. Stephen Schimpf.